I'm Nicole King and this is Marbella Now. It's a brand new day Hey, hey, hey It's a brand new day Halfway Twisted It's so nice to be here every week to keep you updated with everything that's going on in Marbella now. There are a lot of charities and a lot of people who do a lot for charity, but we don't necessarily even know they exist, which is why today my first guest of the programme is Linda Wooden, representing the British Benevolent Fund. How lovely to have you here in quality of the British Benevolent Fund and not age concern as the principal subject of conversation or the Art Society of Benevies. Your many hats, Lady Linda. <laughs> uh, well, this is a new hat. <laughs> How long have you been wearing this hat? Um, October the 1st last year, they decided to expand throughout the whole of Spain. They've been working with the whole of Spain, but always out of Madrid. So they decided to open up an office and launch it here, as I say, in October. So I look after the uh, Marbella, right down to Gibraltar area, which is my main area, and internally, in other words, up to Granada and so on. But occasionally I'll be given another particular client to give advice on, and they will be given an opportunity to respond to my situations. What is the objective of the British Benevolent Fund? Well, believe it or not, it's been going in Madrid since 1933. Wow and normally out of the embassy up in Madrid. However, we've had so many people now coming through our doors over the last few years and expanded hugely since Brexit happened and many, many paperwork's had to be sorted out. Many people here have got passports that have run out. Uh, they've been here 20 years. Uh, their family want nothing to do with them anymore. They need to go back to the UK to get into the British system. And, of course, they don't know where to turn. So the initial thing to do is to go onto our website and put forward what their actual situation is and what they would like from that situation, whether it's to get assistance to get back onto the working mode situation. We have looked after a lady recently who um, had one of those speedy mopeds to get to work and it's broken down completely, so she can't work any longer, which is really desperate. So we've agreed to give her a new moped. Well, in fact, a second-hand moped. But that's so interesting. at least she can get to work. Interesting. I don't think I realise that one would realise that this type of association exists. In fact, I think a lot of people feel in times of COVID, Brexit, that the British government and the embassy was going to pay for them to go home. And it doesn't do that. That's not what it's for. So having an association society like this is wonderful. How does they, what's the criteria based on? Is it literally every case because let's say there's a woman needing a scooter or Yeah, they have to be, they have to be British subjects, very important. Uh, most of them are lapsed subjects. Uh, a lot of them can't get the papers here because they've never bothered to do anything about any papers or their partner has um, passed away and they have got no money. They need to either be repatriated or assisted getting up onto their feet again in Spain. So we can help them in many, many ways. So there's the way of getting them back into workplace again in Spain if they've got their papers in order or getting them out of the country if they can't look after themselves anymore. And then if they get help to return to the UK, are there then facilities and associations there that you collaborate with to take over? How does that work? Because it must be difficult to get back into a system you've been out of, in a lot of the people cases, decades. Well, um, it's a very complicated issue right now, to be honest with you, because um, we have quite a lot of people that are now unable to look after themselves. When they get back to the UK, they've got no money. Their families want nothing to do with them etc etc and the very first step is that one has to have an address in the UK for us to be able to assist them fully many many don't so what happens they have to look after themselves for the first three months 
one way or the other. They cannot get onto the British system for the first three months. So we have no way at the moment of being able to bridge that three month gap. We are looking into it. Uh, we are talking to quite a lot of the uh, MPs and subordinates about uh, trying to bridge that three month gap because there are people lying in hospital here in, um, in Spain, well in Marbella actually, and this particular person's paralyzed down one side. He's only 61 years old. Oh, uh, he has no family that are willing to or able to look after him in the UK. We're in the middle right now of trying to get him back to the UK for immediate 24 hour service and attention. And uh, we, we are in dialogue with the consul, the British consul. They are truly very, very helpful. And they work with us in association with a lot of the clients. And in some cases they'll take them over or not, you know, as the case may be. Yeah. And but also the town hall have been, local oh, town Marbella hall are town so hall. supportive. It's amazing how yeah. far they will go to help people. Well, I don't we, think people we, appreciate that. Well, we have a case right now um, where uh, these people need food, etc., etc., while they're waiting for their papers to be cleared. And I must say that Marbella Town Hall have been absolutely fantastic. One particular person who looks after all the foreigners. Well, Otty, I mean, it's just yes, like she, she's gone beyond. Uh, yeah, Otty and the team are fabulous, but without a doubt, Otty is. Uh, she is, is an above extraordinary. And beyond. She's an extraordinary lady. Um, so. I never realized that they would actually go that further step either. But one learns as, as one gets on with exactly. the whole thing. I think a lot of people actually are reticent to approach the town hall and they don't realize actually how, they're just people there, but people who yeah. live in Marbella, love Marbella, who are proud and happy that the foreigners are here and they really do want us to be connected, hence English TV on RTV Marbella station. Yes. It's just one of the incentives to help us find out what's going on, the things that we can look to each other for to resolve things, as for example, the British Benevolent Fund. So there's a lot to be done there, but at mm. least it's nice to see that it's kicking off local offices. I know Olive must be just delighted to have help. And it fits in also very nicely because you're very active with the age concern. Well, that would lead me on to age concern actually because I'm actually, as you know, on the committee there. And uh, we have a case right now where there's a person that um, age concern could not actually help them any further, and they approached us. So we have taken on that particular case, and we are working with um, the consul and age concern on, on this particular subject. But I mean, we do with BBF, we deal with any age group, Quite a lot of the people that we deal with further up the coast, um, you know, they're Barcelona and so on, are in their 40s, 30s. You know, so it, it's not just for older people, it's for any person who's got trouble. So anyone who's British finds themselves in Spain. Yes. And it's like they can't get to work in the because dwang, in they the don't dwang. have the, the means or needs to get back to England. Or they're whatever. on a holiday and they've lost their passport. You know, we can assist on that as well with the consul, you know, because our consul here covers the whole of that region and including the Canary Islands. Sounds like you've taken on an awful lot of work, Lady Linda. Well, if the British got their papers in order, we wouldn't have so much work. <laughs> but it's funny how yeah. difficult and tricky it seems sometimes just to do the paperwork. So please do go to a gestor, to an agency, British Benevolent Fund, the town hall, anyone to help guide you, get the paperwork in order. Are you enjoying it or do you find it stressful with so many people in, in need? Well, I don't think one can help it, but feel emotional about every single person that you deal with or speak to or so on. So yes, I do get involved and no, I'm not allowed to get involved. I've got to know where to cut it off and step back. And I'm being told off all the time because I'm saying, can I do this and can I do that? But no, I'm not allowed to. And by the way, we are a charity. You know, we're not completely funded by the British government. We do get assistance, but uh, you know, we have to actually raise funds ourselves. So we're going to start doing lots of little events and we're hoping to do a big ball 
at some point this year, September, uh, for the Queen's Jubilee. Oh, wonderful. In Marbella. And so watch the space, everyone. And uh, hopefully you'll all be able to come to it. Well, it sounds you like know. a fabulous charity to support. Yes. Events obviously is a wonderful way to raise funds, but also awareness. Because, as I said, until lockdown, I had no idea that the BBFs existed. Mm. Met Al Olaf, I interviewed him online. It's lovely to see now the extension with having a physical person. A real, a real person. A real person down here locally to also help people. And as I say, it's been up to us to share the information and let people know that it exists. And awareness, funds and gratitude. Linda, thank you so much. It's nice to know there are people who are like you, willing, you don't need to, but you do give so much time to helping others. Well, it's a pleasure. I, I really do enjoy it. And, you know, like the Art Society, all the people that are keen on art and, and that type of thing, um, we're hopefully going to give them fun day trips and this, that and the next thing, but with an art and culture base on it. And the nice thing you is know. it all kind of melds together. Yeah. It all works nicely. Yeah, I, well, I think Spain's a fabulous country to live in, but one has to get the papers in, in order in order to make it easier for the Spanish authorities to be able to deal with us. And there are lots of you benefits know. when you are correctly registered in Spain, so do check it out. Linda, thank you so much. Pleasure. Lovely thank to see you, you again. for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. We have not leave it so long for the next time. No. And you guys don't go away because I will be back in just a moment. Judy and John are getting along famously. They have so much in common. Which now includes both being too tipsy to drive home. Oh, John, you can't drive home like that. <laughs> Neither can I. John looks worried. But not our Judy. She simply calls Linear Director for a free taxi and a tow truck to take her and her car home. Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 to see how they can better your life too. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstan. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And uh, we recommend everybody, nobody drives drinking, everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system and we're proud to sponsor Zero Hero Programme. One, 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 is happy to be Zero Hero Partner. How cool is that? <laughs> G.Y. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Alan Bordman back to the program. It's been about five months, September, we've just been talking since he was here last, talking about the new group, Simply Surviving. Alan, how lovely to see you again. Thank you, Nicole. Great to be back. Welcome back. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, Happy Everything. How have you been? How's everything going? Hectic. Hectic since, uh, since I was with you last. The group has grown quite a lot exponentially. Uh, I think when I was talking to you last, we had about 800 members and we're almost double that now. We're well over 1,500 and uh, with that brings a lot more work, which is great, and a lot more success and a lot of activity. So everything's great. The concept of Simply Surviving is lovely and a little bit novel because a lot of people have a chosen passion like AAA or the Butterfly Children Charity, but the Simply Surviving group has taken a different approach and you raise money for different funds and then you continually change them so everybody's getting a share of these incentives you're putting together and fun incentives. Tell yeah. us a bit about what, how you're raising money. Yeah, okay. Well, well the, the founder, Val Williams, back in February, March of last year, um, saw that 
obviously with lockdown, lots of businesses were struggling, and particularly entertainment venues and entertainers whose income would be pretty much wiped out. So she came up with, with this idea at a time when really the, you know, the whole world was in this pessimistic downward spiral, but she wanted to, to do something positive. So what has happened since, fast forward, is that each month now we have a charity of the month, as, as you just said, uh, and that, that kind of freshens it up because people can dedicate their time and their donations to a different cause every, every month. And every month, by in, in doing that, we have a you know, major dinner with entertainment, we've had auctions and raffles. I think after I saw you last time, um, about a dozen of us went zip lining. I saw that. You saw that. I can't. <laughs> including so Val. Brave. So brave. Including yeah, Val. Who's 83, almost. Wow. So, and she did it. She did and it. And she obviously survived. Did yeah. she enjoy it? She loved it. She didn't like the build-up to it. She didn't sleep at night. And I had to hold her hand all the way up to the gantry because it, it was actually quite daunting when she got there. But, you know, I mean, what a girl. You know, she what a girl. Did it. I Fantastic. met her when she launched her book. And the book was just delightful. Yeah. She's delightful. I mean, the way she handles herself, her talk, she's funny. Yeah. The stories are, are good stories. Yeah. But... At that age to go zip lining, that surely is a, yeah. an example to follow. Yeah. Well, she, you know, somebody came, it was actually an age concern that came up with the idea, and we kind of piggybacked it and made money for them on the back of it. And she said, well, look, if, if the group is doing it, then I'm doing it. And no, nothing would dissuade her. I think a couple of friends said, well, are you quite sure about this at your age? No, nothing was going to stop her doing it. And then she did it again because we, we had um, uh, the Channel 5 series, Bargain Brits in the Sun, follow us uh, for a while. And so they heard about the zip line and wanted to recreate it. So she actually went and did it again, which is That amazing. is fabulous. Yeah. And again, thinking of others. She had a good time the first time, but the second time, a little bit of both. That must have been an exciting experience with the English TV, following what you're doing and getting that extra. Because it's, I suppose, I know you do it selflessly, but it must be nice when you get to see that what you're doing brings in the media and gets that extra coverage. Because at the end of the day, it's about funds and awareness. Yeah. I mean, obviously, both Val and I do a lot of work every day. We're, we're lucky that we're both free to do that. And it's the, it's the kind of the dirty end, if you like, you know, prepar preparing things, visiting restaurants and all, all the preparation that goes in it. So it's really good to be able to do things like this, for example. This is a real joy and a real pleasure, but we're still working. We're still getting the, yeah. the message out there, and the, as, as it will be with Bargain Brits, which I think airs in, in April, something like well, that. Well, looking forward to watching that. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realise the amount of effort that goes into organising an event, whether it's a quiz night that you have organised with our lovely Hannah Lopez, yes. or whether it's um, a dinner or it's entertainment. There's a lot of work involved yeah. and people don't realise. However, what a great way to raise funds and awareness by doing something that's fun. Anyone can do this. You can either join in with Simply Surviving or even as an independent, right? I mean, it's just a great thing to do. Take a birthday or a celebration and include that charity aspect. What charities are you guys supporting right now? Well, uh, throughout February, we are supporting ACAE Payaso. So, you speak Spanish well, I know. Payaso is the word for clown. And they are a volunteer organization which organizes visits uh, to uh, poorly children in hospital. Yeah. Uh, and they dress up, their volunteers dress up very professionally as clowns and, and go to see these children in hospital and, and occasionally put on shows for them as well. And I just think, what a heartwarming way to, to help kids in hospital. It must be either, you know, ill or bored or both. So we're, we're supporting them all the way through February. See, it's something I've never even heard of, and that's the no. wonderful thing of groups like Simply Surviving. You've got people doing different things. We get to know what's going on. Mm. I would love to have a contact there and speak to them and yeah. help promote that because that's just a, a beautiful thing. Yeah, I can easily doing. do that for you. And uh, there's, I, I, I can't call it unique because I don't know if it is, but one of the things that we're doing for ACAE on the 28th of February is a dual language show at the Moonlight Bar, Sunset Beach in Ben Madina. And uh, one of our members, Dahlia Helsby, who is a very talented um, actor and singer, uh, she is putting together a mini version of Cinderella. 
in English, a comic version, in, uh, including the hairy godmother, of all things. Uh, and the second half is going to be a show in Spanish by ACAE Payasos. They're going to actually do a clown show. Both of them, both of the shows are largely visual, so language isn't going to be an issue. But I think it's a great way to bring the two communities together it, under the one roof for the, for one common cause. I think it's fabulous. I look forward to being there. Yeah. Hopefully do a little bit of recording in case you can't make it in person. That'd Sounds perfect for my little granddaughter. Fabulous. Definitely a day out for Nana with her yeah. little one. <laughs> Anything else we need to say? How do people find you? How do they contact you through the association and to take part? Where do they follow you? Sure. But I'll just say one quick thing about the, the children's show. Uh, is that children go for only five year olds. Parents and guardians go free. All right, so oh, I just wow. wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's a that. really. I'm looking forward to that. You said that's the end of February. That's in the 28th of February. 28th yeah. of February is coming up very soon. Yeah. Get your tickets now. <laughs> and that's at the Moonlight Theatre. That's at the Moonlight Theatre in uh, Sunset Beach in Bella Madonna. Yeah. So, how do people contact us? Well, a variation of ways, mainly through Facebook, as I mentioned before. Just look up Simply Surviving Group. Or they can email uh, Val, which is valwilliams39 at yahoo.com. Or they can WhatsApp or call me on 6105 22605. Lots of ways to get in touch. Wonderful. Alan, it's so nice to see you again. We will catch up in another couple of months so that sure. we can keep seeing what you're doing. And please do get involved with the events because they are so worthwhile. The one on the 28th of February for me is a must. Sounds like a lot of fun with a hairy godmother, just to give us a little snippet of the comedy. Can I mention one more event You quickly? can, you can. Go for it. Right, on the 12th of March, we've got a special event. It's actually a fashion show, and we're doing tapas and a uh, welcome drink and all that kind of a thing. And we're very lucky to have a couturier. His name is Brian Piccolo, and he has designed dresses for John Collins and for various MPs' wives and royalty and goodness knows what. And he is, he is actually running this fashion show on the 12th of March at 2 o'clock at the new Play restaurant in Playa Marina in Mijas. And it's just 25 euros for all of that. Another one, sign me up. I can't believe I'm going to be leaving Marbella. I never leave Marbella without getting <laughs> oxygen masks, you know, like tetanus jabs and all the rest of it. But sometimes it's worth it because, yeah. unfortunately, charity, there's never an end to what people need. Yeah. And so there are no delimitations of the areas that we need to group together to make sure that we get the awareness and the yeah. support that each charity so deserves. Congratulations. Thank you. Really lovely. Facebook page is Simply Surviving. Contact Val Williams. You can contact Alan Boardman or you could just contact me to get the information. We will steer you in the right direction. Alan, again, thank you so much. Terrific. Very thank proud you. of you, to know you, and you guys are doing a, a great job. And Val, zip lining, really, <laughs> I mean, like, chapeau, young lady, chapeau. <laughs> Don't go away. I'll be back after the break with more of what's going on in Marbella right now. Hero, 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 welcome here. here. I think now you're in my room. Let the music get to your heart. Let it set you on your way. No time to hesitate. And welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Tearing us apart. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. Zero Hero, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Hi guys, Casa Tua is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. A big thank you to Shane O'Shea for introducing me to my next guest. His name is Gary Robertson, and he's going to talk to us about Lilop. Yes, <laughs> sounded a bit weird when I read the title, but there's actually a lot of uh, method to the madness. Nice to meet you, Gary. Likewise, Nicole. Uh, um, you've got a, a great association that Je uh, Shane was just like messaging, but then when I went into the web, it looks awesome. I mean, very well set up. You've really put a lot of thought into this. About 22 years worth of thought, Nicole. Okay, all right. So. You, you can see it. I was very surprised at how organised, scheduled and developed all the different concepts were. Mm -hmm. So, nice to meet you. And what is Lilop? 
So Lilop is living your life on purpose. And basically for 22 years, I've been very lucky to have worked with some fabulous people. And over those 22 years, I've stole some snippets of useful information and I've put it into this little book called Living Your Life on Purpose. So really what I want to do is to help as many people as I can to lead healthier, wealthier and happier lives. So That's you've been on the mindfulness bandwagon for a long time. A lot of us are jumping on more recently, but it's very important to actually plan and at least have a vision of where you want to go if you want to get somewhere. Yeah, and to do that, um, we base our book on the wheels of life. Uh, and if you can imagine a bicycle, the back wheel is the driving wheel, so the mindset stuff, and then the front wheel is fun and recreation, relationships, business, career, and finances. So, yeah, it's important to keep on track. Um, but when I was looking at your website, you have a phrase on your website I particularly like, and uh, that is, um, people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's what we're doing at Lilop. We're trying to build up a community of like-minded people to help them live their lives in a, bit, in a better place, really. What was your instigation? Was it things that happened to you as a child, difficulties you faced, a friend? What was that motivation behind it? Yeah, I think we've all had hardships. Um, but for me, people say to me, Gary, why are you so positive? And I say, well, it's quite simple. I spent five years in the army when I went to the first Iraq Gulf War. Oh. Um, yeah, I saw death and destruction, all that type of misery. And then I spent nine years in the Scottish Police Service where I saw murders, rapists, thieves. And it's quite horrible when Was you Was it go, on a par? I mean, in a sense, a very difficult Iraq <sighs> and then working as a policeman. But mm. it sounds like you saw horrors in both. Is it, is yeah, it's not nice. I mean, I think the worst thing is going to parents to say that your child has passed away. That's the, I think that's the worst one. Um, and I start every day with gratitude. So if, if, you, if you think about life now, we are all in a very fortunate place. And if we've got gratitude as the foundation, then we've got a platform to grow into whatever we want to be in life, really. You must be a very strong person to have seen what you've seen and not just see it, but live it, feel it, and then be able to leave it aside. How do you do that? How do you begin to put that comp compartmentalised? Because somehow you must have that all in a little box somewhere. I, I don't think I do, Nicole. I think that I got sent to Borstal as a child. My parents called it boarding school, but it wasn't. So from the age of nine, you learn to be quite independent and you just deal with things. Oh um, my Lord. And I think the way I look at it is life is like that game Donkey Kong. Do you remember that game Donkey Kong? And Kong is throwing down lots of barrels and through life, your job is to jump over those barrels and just keep progressing through the levels. And that's what I try and do. Did you choose to go into the army? Was this something that, did you <laughs> expect you would follow the path that you did? I joined the army because I love sport and I love the idea of traveling the world. I didn't expect to actually go and do army things. Because so. I kind of, seeing your age and the references you're making, I remember walking around Rygate, Red Hill, different places, and there was recruitment everywhere, every corner looking for the kid that wanted to travel the world, and they promoted that. Yeah. Basically, come and play video games yeah. and travel the world with us. <laughs> yeah, it was good fun, but you know, it's a life learning. It's a lesson through life, so. And now, I loved it before we were running a bit late today. We are in Spain and Andalusia, so it's not mañana, it's Basel. <laughs> we were running a little bit late, and I loved it when you said, oh, well, this is because I have to go with my wife, because she's the most important. Absolutely. Priorities for you are very clear of what you want to put most important in your life now, and then where everything else fits in, which is the secret of being successful in life, business, everything, really, no? Yeah, I think people get it wrong. It's not a work-life balance. It's a life-work balance. And unfortunately, most people... Think back, Nicole, to... Well, we can't because we're too young, but think back to the old days when we had this pea soup fog, apparently, in London. And most people walk around with pea soup fog around themselves. They have no clear direction in life, and they just keep... Every day is like the same. But what we do here at Lilop is we clear away the fog so you can spend more time working, spend more time having some fun, and actually become wealthier. So tell us a bit about Lilop. It exists, you've got a book, you've got a website. What do we do with that? Well, How the, do we begin? Well, here in uh, Costa del Sol, I only moved here in April last year. Welcome. So post-Brexit. <laughs> and I love business networking. So we're setting up some business networking groups here where we blend in networking, but also because I love personal development and business coaching, at every single one of our sessions, people get an injection of Lilop. So that's how we're basically passing out the good words of living your life on purpose. And do you have events prepared? Are there coffee mornings? How do people get involved? Go to the website and register. What's the format? 
So we've got an event on the 10th of March, and that's at the Royal Tennis Club in Marbella. And then the next one's the 7th of April. But if they want to have a look at that, they can go to um, givebackworks.com. Okay, and what's that about? Uh, it's a networking group that I set up 11 years ago in York. And actually within a few months, we've got 250 business owners part of the group. Because it's quite simple, if you give, you get back and it works. That's the whole idea of the name. It really does. It's funny how, I think also you get what you project. What would be your, I suppose, your mantra, your recommendation to people to say, okay, I mean, you've been at war, you've been a policeman. It's amazing to, I mean, I'm, thank you so much for I mean, the sacrifices you guys make, even if you're not sure that you're going to make those sacrifices yeah. when you sign up. But what would be your words of advice or, or just guidance for people to, to say, listen, life is tough, but this would be your summary, I suppose, of everything. What would be the biggest conclusion for you? Well, just quickly, Nicole, how do you put a jam in a donut? You squid it in. You squirt it, right? And I was delivering a seminar one time, and I asked that question. And one of the guys said, Gary, 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 I know exactly how you put the jam in the donut. And I said, go on then, Nick, tell me. And he said that his family had a baker's, and sometimes when he was on jammy donut duty, he would put two squirts of jam in a donut. I mean, Nicole, can you imagine being on the receiving end of a double squirted donut? Yeah. How fantastic would that be? Yeah. And you're wondering, where on earth are you going with this? Um, but imagine your head is the donut and your jam are the thoughts. Who put the thoughts into your donut? It'll be your parents, your, your teachers, the media. Oof. And I believe that we all need to have regular jam transfusions. So through life and through personal development, if you're open to learning, what you've had in the past, you can, you can put it in a box or comp compartmentalize, as you say. But in reality, it's a wonderful world out there. It's full of abundance. So make the best of it while we can. I mean, can you come every week <laughs> and just talk to people? <laughs> it's like absolutely fabulous. I can see why you are a coach. The book, I'm sure, gives a lot of guided information and advice. Also, the website and the networking groups for businesses. This is your main objective, not necessarily individuals, but businesses who want to make the most out of what they got, what they offer, and how they can enjoy the process. Yeah, for sure. Any business in Costa del Sol. Um, who would like to get more business more easily, meet some fantastic people and learn some new skills. That's what we're promoting with Give Back Works. Sounds wonderful. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Gary Robertson, thank you very much. And Shane O'Shea, thank you very much for the introduction. Don't go away because once again, I'll be back after the break in just a moment. Hey, hey. All right, guys. So I'm the designated driver tonight. So I'm going to choose the Zero Hero place. So all of my soft drinks are for free. And if you want to go somewhere else, just check out the Facebook, Instagram, or the ZeroHero.es website for any of the bars, discotheques, or restaurants on there. I'm happy to go anywhere you want to go, as long as it's Zero Hero. Magnolia's is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. One, 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 one. We're proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Joining me now is Dr. Jose Moreno, who is the paediatrician at the Hospitan Hospital. How very fortunate. My daughter's just pregnant again. So when I saw that CIT Marbella was sending us a paediatrician to the program as one of their members this week, I was like, how very exciting. Lovely to meet you. Well, nice to meet you too. Thank you. Do Pleasure. you have many international babies delivered at Hospitan? Yes, I would, I would think at least one third of them are, are not from Spain. And is it very different? Because I know that giving birth in a foreign country can be terrifying, particularly one's not expecting someone to perhaps speak the language, but obviously your English is wonderful. I think, it, I think it's, it's obviously... Giving birth is always a very, a very, very intense experience, but uh, because our hospital is a small one, um, I think everything is very familiar, and uh, the, we are a team of four pediatricians. So um, all four of us speak English. Wonderful. What made you decide to be a doctor and then to specialise in? Well, I was uh, when I was um, fourteen. I had a very good, this very good teacher in in biology. And they, he led me into, into science, and then I like people, and that's why I, I became a doctor, and I like it, so that's why I'm a pediatrician. Very exciting. Tell us a little bit about the setup 
at hospital because I know that when I've been there, as you say, it's a smallish hospital. It's kind of got a cosy feel to it, but it's, it's not tiny. It looks like it's a very a well um, it's well equipped. Equipped. Yeah, That's it's well I'm equipped. For. Uh, it's uh, we have around 350 uh, deliver deliveries per year. Um, we do not accept. Uh, we do not accept um, um, premature babies, uh, and um, the the um, gynaecology and, and pediatric team is, is very good. So normally it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a very nice size hospital. Where have you come from before you came to Hospitin? What's your yeah, trajectory? I, 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 did my, I studied in Cadiz and then did my, my medical studies in, in, in Cadiz and my uh, pediatrics in England for five years. I was going to say, because your English is <laughs> not just the English, it's the accent as well. Thank you. So that was, uh, when I came back from, from England, I, um, I practiced in the Servicio Andaluz de Salud in Campo de Gibraltar. So I did my pediatrics both in primary care and in the hospital in, in um, Hospital Punta Europa in Algeciras. Um, then after seven years, I moved because they opened this, they opened this hospital in, in Nespona. So I've been there for 17 years now. It's amazing how the time goes by. Yeah, exactly. I'm just in shock. When you said that, it can't be that long. Yes. But yes, it is that 17 long. 17 years. I always think of it as a brand new hospital just up the road. And <laughs> yeah, it's been there a while. For you, the change of living in Andalusia and the cost of having been in England and all the different areas, is it really nice to come home? Uh, I know the Spanish yes. just love England. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah well, my my experience in, in England was, was really good. Uh, um, we stayed in London, North London, for a while, in in uh, High Barnet, and then uh, Wimbledon, and then Reading, and finally in Bristol. So five years in total. I knew what I was going to find here when I came back, um, but it was very interesting working for the NHS in, and, and getting the training there. I'm sure. But also, I suppose, it's just the timings for me. Like in England, when everyone's going to bed, here people are finishing lunch, basically. It's like the, the sobri messer yeah. and... We, we, we never change our, our, our meal times there, to be, to be honest. So you just maintain the Spanish yeah, system within yeah. the... Because that's what I remember in England when I went back again for a, few, for a while, and it was like the evening film is on at 8 o'clock at night. Exactly. Like everyone's in bed by 10. Yeah, you know that the main, main meal is lunch and then yours is tea. Although things I've noticed when I was in Madrid a couple of weeks ago are changing here also. Before you couldn't go to dinner before nine o'clock, and now at eleven things are closing. So there is becoming this, this is a smooth confluence. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like it. I want the I like the puentes. <laughs> the real thing, the I like real thing. I like the real Spanish way. Good family unit and puentes, which mm. is uh, the best. So anyone having a baby pregnant. Or what would be the pro the procedure? Do you have to have private insurance? Can you? Yeah, is you it a can, private hospital? What's the situation? You can either go privately or you can go with your insurance. Um, then once the baby is delivered, we stay there. We we attend all deliveries, both at risk and non-risk. Uh, um, we um, uh, the the um, gynecologist, the pediatrician, and the midwife are there when the baby is born. Then we we make sure that the baby doesn't need any resource. And then the baby goes with mummy to the to the uh, uh, ward, and in the ward they will stay two days if if it's not a cesarean, uh, it's a section, and four days if it is a section. And we do uh, we do care for the babies while they're there. Once they are discharged, the uh, we will follow them up. Normally we do a couple of of uh, visits on the on the first on the first uh, two weeks, and then one 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 visit monthly. Uh, until 12 months of, of, of age and, and then three, three th quarterly, a quarterly visit. I remember growing up that we had our local doctor, mine was Dr. Cardi Brown. She was absolutely wonderful and it was somebody that was, I, as a child that I looked up to and I enjoyed going to see. I know a lot of people here don't necessarily have the local GP for their children. Can you get this at hospital that when you have little ones that you can say yeah, they, they can have grow up? With a doctor there? We, 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 as I said before, we, we uh, attend them from the, from the word go and we stay with them until 14 years of age. So if they need admission, we admit them and when the, when the charges is us, we will follow them up. So we are their, their um, sort of bedside pediatricians. That's wonderful because I say yeah. people need that. There is continuity is very important in care.
without a doubt. And I think it's that, that to know that when something's happening, because I know, for example, it's, it, if your car breaks down, you keep taking it to different garages hoping to find the right one. <laughs> you don't okay. want to do that with a doctor. You want to you know, just you want. know that where you're going, that you've got a place that you can trust and they can uh, it's handle a very, everything. Very, it's a very, um, uh, very enriching experience to be in contact with the family along the, the, the life of the, of, the, of the little ones. I've got, this morning I had a mum who, who was one of my patients uh, 17 years ago. <laughs> so yes, it's a, it's a continuity is very important in care. You know the family, you know the kids. Um, and that's very, very interesting. Lovely. You mentioned just before that your daughter was studying in Reading. Uh, my she... daughter was born in Reading. I was born in, in Reading. Reading. Yes. Is there anyone She's in the family uh, following in your footsteps? No, no. They've got uh, two children, child. Uh, Marina is 25 and Pepito is uh, 20. And both of them are in Scotland now. Oh, hi, they, they live and study there. Wonderful. It's lovely to see how different nationalities find their orma, their place, or in all places across the world. Or we can all just come to Marbella. Yes. 147 oh. nationalities <laughs> living it up in one little 27 kilometres. Okay, well, this okay. has been Dr. Jose Moreno. He is the paediatrician at the Hospiten Hospital, which is just on the way to Estepona, and it's been there for 17 years, apparently. And he has been my guest from CIT Marbella, which is a business networking association joining together over 500 companies covering 80 different professions. The nice thing is they all support each other. Hashtag so much better together. Don't go away, because we'll be back just after the break. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. So here we are at Everest. Yeah. Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stickers going up. Hi, hey, uh, my name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, to Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Sister Taperia. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> My final guest of the program is a gentleman I'm meeting thanks to Tom Jennings. I first met Tom Jennings because when we were doing the St. Patrick's Day, he was the guy organising it back in 2016 when I started the radio and the television. Well, the other day I got a message from him saying, you don't want to meet this guy. He's doing something really, really cool in Marbella. And that's why I'm welcoming right now, Joss. Hello. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. It took me a while to understand why you and the Hotel El Fuerte and Pro Shade, I couldn't work out what the story was. But as I get it, you have a awnings, Toldo company, a shades company, Pro Shade, and knowing that El Fuerte Hotel is going to be doing a lot of construction work, you are giving away, like, earplugs. Is yeah. that, have I got it right? The idea <laughs> got born uh, because I've got the office directly opposite. And... Uh, we all love El Fuerte, to be honest. Nobody, you know, it's a, it's a nice, uh, nice hotel. Everybody it's been goes there since there. I was a child. I, I mean, it's always been there. It's Marbella. Yeah, and I used to gym there. I used to swim there, you know. A uh, cup of tea with my parents, always Hotel El Fuerte. Um, but uh, now they're doing the renovation. I think a 44 million euros renovation, something like that. Uh, and they might have overlooked the noise and the dust and... Um, so being there so long, there's no reason to complain. You know, people say you have to put in a denuncia, and a, you know. That's what can you do? Yeah. Well, they're going to stop building. <laughs> yeah. Also, but we're happy with it, you know. So I thought, no, uh, sitting there and, and, and being bothered by the noise anyway, you know, uh, let's, let's see how we can benefit a little bit. So what we did is uh, bought airplugs for all the neighbors. And uh, we started with one building already. Of course, it has a little leaflet, a little flyer, which promotes our company, of course, uh, which we're going to present to all the neighbors so they can sleep a little bit better. Or 
because people sleep during the day in Spain as well. Or even if you're working, I mean, it's just, yeah. oh, just trying to relax and listen to music yeah. or cooking. It's impossible. The noise is surreal. Yeah. Honestly, the noise is surreal. Yeah. And if you, like you do, have your office right there, yeah. It's like actually kind of nerve-wracking, though, eight hours a day. Yeah, you f you're fine the first couple of hours, but after then you get tired, you know, and then you say, well, let's have a sleep on the couch, you know, but you can't sleep, of course, so it's building up. And then for no reason, you just go out to a client who's not even waiting on you, you know. So if anyone's watching the show and they're living in that area, can they come into your shop and say, hey, pro shade, yeah. I'm suffering from the noise, I'd like some of your earplugs? No, we make sure that in all the buildings around Hotel Alfredo, there's a little box and they just walk in and they can take out one flyer and uh, earplugs. It's from the famous brand 3M, so it's not rubbish, you know, you can safely put it in your ears without being deaf the next day. Uh, and they can, all the buildings around there, you've got Al Torre, you've got uh, Mediterranean, they will have a little box on the desk, you can get it there. Where are you yeah. from originally, Jos? I'm from Holland, yeah. Oh, very nice, from yeah. the Netherlands, yeah. very nice too. And as I understand it, you brought with you today an intern that you also got from Yu Jong from Lenin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, you know, We've got a lot of work, you know, and, and, and uh, this is just cheap labor. Let me be honest about it, of course. Uh, yeah. He's being sarcastic. <laughs> it's certainly not how we look at our interns. Yeah. In it's just somebody to, to clean a car, you know, that's really... <laughs> but isn't no, it nice it, it, helping it a youngster start off in it life? Is. Give yeah. them a bit of experience. And undeniably, your intern's getting a lot of experience with you. Yeah. Personality, apart from the business yeah. um, aspect. Yeah, he's completely fed up with, already, uh, with, with me because I'm trying to explain him a little bit more about business, but about life as well, you know, the, the broader I do the picture. same with, with mine. I think it's hard to not take that opportunity yeah. to share the wisdom that you have to take so many years yeah. to learn that if you can help them just, like, learn a few things in the middle better. Yeah. So when, when did you start the Pro Shade business here in Marbella? This is long ago. This is 2007. And a couple of years later, I sold it, actually. And I wanted to slow down a little bit and drink a little bit more wine. And I started picking up uh, paragliding, which is a marvelous sport, but, uh, but not for me. So I was in the hospital for two years. Oh, my uh, Lord. Yes. And uh, then some old clients started to ring me and say, can you come back, you know, little things here and there. And before you know, you're back in business. Uh, but more quiet. And I'm not that stressed as I'm used to be, you know. If somebody comes in late, some, something comes in late, I, I don't get angry. After anymore. two years lying in bed in recovery, I can imagine that that would change your perspective I can't tell you anything bit. about the fish, uh, fish, uh, fish boats here in the, in the port and uh, behind Chiron, you know, I know, I know every color and, and detail, I can't tell you anything about it. So, I mean, like the accident, I mean, obviously it was a very serious accident to have you laid up for two years. Yeah, well, it, it, it split up and you get the, 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 the screws in there. And, Bacteries and uh, I got a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm yeah. really, really sorry about that, but I'm really happy you. <laughs> At least I got. You know, it was a warning, wasn't it? You know, stop drinking wine, stop flying. You know, go back to work. You know. Don't drink and drive. Huh? Don't yeah, drink exactly. and drive, or exactly. don't drink and fly. Yeah. Well, I can drink and drive now because we've got them now. So. <laughs> This is really not the way we're treating our interns. <laughs> Ignore your all these things. <laughs> but it's funny. Some companies actually do look to interns as not cheap, free labour, and they run their businesses on them. But I think that when all the students that used is involved in yeah. are coming to businesses that want to give not just business experience, but the heart, yeah. life yeah. experience. And, yeah. uh, but it, it, it's natural, you know. It, um, if they're young, you try to, you go through the day, and you, or he doesn't know that yet, you know. For us, it's, we know certain things. Then, and then it's natural to try to explain them, you know, and not in a father-son kind of way, but in a way like, you know, hey, wake up in the future, you might, you know. For me, for example, uh, there was a guy who taught me everything about business, five years long, and his name was Bart in the Netherlands. And I hated the guy, you know, he, he was talking about all kind of bullshit I wasn't interested in. But 20 years later, 15 years later, you think, oh, that's what he meant, you know, and then... It, the penny drops is what you say. Exactly, and, and it can't drop until the right moment. Yeah. But if you've heard it and the information is there, yeah. at the moment, the given moment, hopefully they do remember. Yeah. So, uh, and you've got the students who are just sitting there for four months and you've got students who actually want to do something, you know. I try to figure out which way they're going in the future, try to 
uh, adjust my work on what they're going to do. You've got plenty of work anyway, so uh, yeah. yeah well, it's good, congratulations. Good it's nice to know that you have work. Yep. And if you need new awnings, blinds, toldos, what else do you do? Just that, or do you have like sidelines around the blinds? Yeah, but that's illegal to talk about that, isn't okay. it? Okay, yeah. so same as the <laughs> abusing the interns working for free. If you want to replace your blinds, get new blinds, go and get a quote from Pro Shade. Yours is, as you can see, is just a charming guy. So you're going to get a lot more than just a good deal. Yes. Thank you very much. Really nice to meet you. Nice. And Tom, thank you for the introduction. Really do feel the better for it. And yeah. nice to know that you're taking that noise problem and as opposed to complaining about it you're using it as an opportunity to get your name out there your blind company to be more known and hopefully protect people's earlobes their ear we drums. start with the ears and we, we see from there yeah take it from there <laughs> lovely to meet you and lovely to have all of you with us for another week to see who and what is going down in Marbella now if you miss the shows when they're aired live you can watch them from the RTV Marbella website which is rtvmarbella.tv slash oh you can actually in on live in directo or afterwards you can watch from the archive which is the rtvmarbella.tv slash television slash Marbella hyphen now or you could just go to my website nicoleking.es that has links to the RTV Marbella page with the programs also to my weekly column Marbella Moments in the Euro Weekly News and our Zero Hero Incentive. Loads of bars, restaurants and hotels giving free soft drinks if you're the designated driver. Road traffic safety is equally important as protecting our luggles. So take care of yourselves. Please be nice to each other and join us again for more What's Going On in Marbella now next week. Mwah! Hasta pronto. Gracias. We are all the same So much trouble Tearing us apart Poison us